Hello, this is Kim Stedman, and this is your class for the Difference Makers Blogging Planner. Um, I really titled this class because if you're wanting to blog, I'm hoping that your big why is that you do want to make a difference um, in whatever um, whoever your target reader is. And if that's a whole different class about really defining and knowing your target reader and what type of things resonate, what type of topics resonate with them. And that's not what this class is about. This is the next step. The organizational aspect of just keeping track of all the stuff that has to do with blogging and, and your blogging so that um, you can alleviate your frustrations so you can elevate your progress, right? When you get frustrated, it bogs you down. It um, can make you feel like you don't even want to blog. And the whole idea with this planner and with these templates um, is to give you the tools that, that you need so that you can... Um, so that you can blog and that you have all of this information in one spot. And believe me, when you have things, when you're less frustrated, you will make progress. Okay. Now, the first page in the blogging planner is creating your year at a glance. Okay. Um, so you can start this at any point, any time where you are in, in your blogging timeline. I left it blank. I did not put months on there. But taking the time to look out over the next year and plan ahead. This is called an editorial calendar. And when you sit down and take that time, you can look ahead at the months and you can look at what holidays and special days are coming up, what type of events are coming up that really that will resonate with your uh, with your reader. Everybody, you know, has different readers, and so if you are doing a um, a, a craft blog or something or a DIY blog, then a lot of those crafts and everything may be driven by what holidays are coming up. And so knowing that, you know, February is coming and Valentine's is coming. And so some of the blog posts can be about that holiday. Um, you may want to use it to look ahead um, of what topics, again, resonate with your reader. Um, it might not even have to be specific holidays. You can just plan ahead about specific topics. And on this planner, you're not going to, you won't be writing every single little detail on this planner. This is just your umbrella overview to help guide you through the process for the rest of the planning. But having that out here, you know, written down so that you can look at and so that you can see, oh, you know, I've got three topics for this month and four topics for this month and only one topic for, for one month and the next topic, you know, next month might be blank. And so you can immediately see where you are going to need to spend a little bit more time to get your your blogging, blogging planner, your editorial planner and start plugging it in. Uh, do you have to fill in every blank right now? No, you don't. But it does help to have that umbrella overview and just look and see where your uh, holes are, where you will need to be curating ideas um, for. Now, the next thing that you need to have is your future post ideas. Uh, list and this particular template you know is just very uh, simple <laughs> lines numbered and then a column that says date used and so as you were generating that overview uh, you may have had some ideas pop up 
as you ruminate and think about these different months and curate and and look at you know different things being posted on the internet other places i mean that's where we get a lot of our ideas you may see some ideas that that you have uh, these don't have to be in order this page in your planner is your brainstorming page okay this is where you uh, just start here in, in Texas we say throw mud on the walls this is where you just start curating some ideas future post ideas it does not mean that every idea you write down must be fleshed out into a blog post um, it is just a place to curate those ideas. So you will have more than one page of future post ideas. And this is a good landing spot that when you have an idea that pops into your head, instead of grabbing a scrap piece of paper um, that gets lost on your desk, grab your blogging planner and write those ideas down in your blogging planner so that you have them all in in one place <coughs> excuse me then as you use these ideas yes you can put your date that you used and if again if you never use the idea that's okay it doesn't mean you know that it was a bad idea it just means you don't need it now and um, you'll have pages and pages of this okay let's go to the next piece in your blogging planner. Now this is where you keep track of your blogging goals and so your page may look something like this. Uh, first of all the big word, the big G word here, goals. Setting your goals for your blog and everybody will have different goals at different times. Uh, one goal may be that you're just trying to uh, curate ahead and get a nice uh, chunk of blog posts written for your for your blog. Maybe your blog is new or it's time for it to be freshened up and so your goal right now might be to write 12 fresh new blog posts. Your goal may be to increase uh, visitors to your website. Your goal may be to increase people opting in for your free offer that you have on your blog. Everybody's goal will be different, but um, one of my sayings is a map not drawn is a treasure not Found. In other words, if you don't make the goals, if you don't have your map drawn out, then it's going to be a lot harder to reach the treasure, to reach that ultimate of what you want happening with your, with your blog. And so as an author, as a writer, you're trying to connect with your readers. So your goal, um, hopefully, is going to eventually be to have people want to opt in to your list so that you can email them um, and make connection with them and and that they want to be connected with you in case when you have another book come out or when your book that you're working on comes out. So having your goal, but I've left this blank to where you can set your own goals, you can make your own plans, you can analyze and sit back and say what worked, what failed, and do you have any thoughts on this? Okay. Um, these are very important parts to sit back and to think about when you are going through the steps and doing things. And so there's four, I have four weeks on mine. I do that, you know, do it four weeks at a time. You can look at it, you can see uh, what worked, what failed, and uh, being truthful with yourself, you know, maybe. Maybe you got real sick and was fighting off the flu for three weeks and you really just didn't get to even uh, do anything with your blog. You didn't get to write. You didn't, you know, you just didn't do anything. <coughs> Pardon me. And that's okay. 
write that down so that you know, so that six months later, when you're reviewing things, you know, you can look back and remember what was going on. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope, I hope that, you know, again, it's a template. It's for you to use as fits for your needs, but these are the basic questions for goal setting that you ask yourself and that you answer. Okay, the next one is your post planner. And this one is really super important. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so that you can see this little checklist that I have has all the different elements in it that when you're planning a blog post and you're getting it set up to publish that you want to make sure that you've identified and that you know and that that are, are done, okay? Of course, your date and the title of your post, but deciding what type of post it is, you know, short posts, long posts, a review of something, a video, or a podcast where, you know, it's either a video, uh, an, just the audio transcript, or maybe, you know, it was a you visiting with another writer or reader or whatever, okay? So a podcast, but that means that it's, it's audio. Um, then any notes that you have for that planner, maybe there was a guest, maybe there, um, Maybe this is a new category or a new topic that you're starting. Just whatever whatever notes that you have. Maybe it took longer for you to do because you had laryngitis or something. I don't know. Just whatever notes you feel um, are worthy to go in your notes. But you know, a place to have notes. Keywords. Uh, when it comes to blog post planning and if you are working on getting organic traffic, to your blog post, meaning that people find you uh, either through links posting in other social media places or but keywords have to do with the, the searches by the search engines. So Bing and uh, what is it, DuckDuck, DuckDuckGo and uh, um, Google, of course, and having your what keywords that you set for that post and having that written, written down there what tags that you used and what category that you used. If you, you know, are using a like a WordPress blog post, you know, you set those tags and categories. And when you establish your plan for your blog, you plan ahead of what tags and categories that you are going to be building for your blog. Having that clear and concise uh, plan is actually kind of is what makes the search engines happy. They can see that your blog is about this topic and there are these, you know, four, five or six main categories and, you know, instead of having a random of 50 different categories and 175 different tags. Uh, apparently the algorithms don't like that much information, okay? Um but keeping track of it on paper, um, any other related posts, and this is super helpful because in, in the search engines, they like to see that you have outbound links and inbound links to a blog post. So if you are going to, if you're writing a blog post and you know that a relevant other blog post you want to be able to link to that. And so this planner sheet just helps you get all of that information here before you get started writing. So so that you're not just, you know, saying, oh, yeah, I've got to find a, rele uh, a relevant blog post you know, that goes to this post. Hmm, let me go through. This helps you with all that pre-research to get ready to plan. That's what planning is all about, okay? And then you have a little short to-do list over here that, of course, proofing and editing your blog post, uh, checking the fre frequency of your keywords, and checking your excerpt that posts, um, and then having your featured image, 
your link to related posts, making sure that you have your H1, H2, even H3 tags. Um, make sure that your subscriber form is visible on the page or is referenced in the blog post. And then your to do with your promotion. You know, the, the last thing you want to do is publish a post and that post just sits there and you just wait for people to find it. You know, the flip side to having a blog is promoting your blog. Will you promote it everywhere? If you are a sole blogpreneur and you are the only one handling your blog, then I'm going to say probably not. You'll need to find your two, maybe three social media streams where your ideal reader hangs out. And so that, again, is part of your pre-planning at the beginning and knowing the social demographics, knowing the demographics of your reader and where they where they hang out. And so, yes, it has to do with age group. It has to do with um, income status and, and even can have to do with you know, where, where they live. You know, people that live in rural environments have a lot different uh, habits than um, folks that live in city environments and commute on a train for an hour and a half to get to work, okay? So, again, this is part of, that is all part of your pre, you need to know your ideal reader before you get started so that you're not spinning your wheels trying to promote on every single social media stream because if you are the sole blogpreneur, um, authorpreneur, you will burn out very quickly. So having your promotion strategy and then whether it's scheduled or immediately published. And this is real important to review especially if you schedule ahead and so that it's set up on a timer uh, within, let's say, the WordPress. You know, you can schedule your post. We'll go back and check and make sure that the post actually did go live on, on your website, okay? So that's the, um, this is a real um, <laughs> important page to have in in your planner this this is like the you know your big checklist for all of these posts all right let's move to the next checklist you should have in your planner oh now we talk about money and sometimes that is not a popular topic <laughs> but your blog traffic and your income goals now not every writer has specific income goals for their blog, but in a roundabout way, you do have probably income goals that has to do with, with your book and um, with gaining readers, which means gaining people who buy your book. So in a roundabout way, you do have an income goal. Um, I think it's very important to set those goals and to be very specific about how much income that you would like to gain from your book. And I've had some authors, you know, say, well, you can't control what people buy. And, and that's true. You can't, you know, you can't sit there and over the cyberways twist people's arms to, to buy your books. But if you set an income goal, Remember the, the my, my phrase, a uh, map not drawn is a treasure not found. If you don't set that goal, then what drives you to, to make actions, to set up your action plan, to do things so that your book does get in front of readers' eyes? And I probably didn't describe that very well, but... <laughs> Um, let's just say, let me see if I can describe it a little bit in a, in a more, uh, thoughtful way. 
when you have your goals and your steps that you are going to that you're going to strive for with your sales, with your blog traffic. Um, as you present and write about what your book is about or your life as an author or, or different things that connect with your readers, they learn to know you and they, they get that trust factor. And hopefully they become your raving fan and they want to buy your book. Having that strategy of getting your website out there. And so here's the deal. You know, here's, you know, we didn't even talk about this at the beginning. But if your sole strategy to connect with writers is that you are going to use one social media stream as your home base and that's where Everybody can find you, and that's the only place that they can find you. Well, then, what happens if that social media stream shuts down? Or right now, most all the social media streams are free. What happens if they decide to put a price tag on it? You know, are you are you going to pay? Are those are those people that casually get there on that social media stream? Are they going to pay to get to get to be on there? You know, I don't know. I'm just throwing out some some random, you know, what ifs, but you need your website. That's your platform. As an author, that is, it's called your platform. If you think about standing on a stage so that people can see you and your website is your platform. No one can take that platform away from you. It's yours. And so your traffic to that website as an author starts helping you to uh, to build your fan base. And, you know, it only takes starting with one. So don't get discouraged, okay? Number one, it don't, you know, you've got to start somewhere. Number two, you start learning to drive. People start, your website starts becoming synonymous with you instead of them always looking for you on social media and especially if you write blog posts and you just give a tiny little snippet on social media hey check out my new blog post about blah 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 you know and leading them to the so leading them back to your blog and your traffic and because that's where on your website that you can have blog posts about your new book coming out or about the book that you were a contributor to um, or about the magazine articles that you know that you were published in you know whatever that you have and on your website that is where you can now start selling your book and other little things that you are creating that have to do about your book world okay and so back to the person, how I can't twist their arm. No, I can't, you can't twist their arm. But if you never talk about that book, okay, let's say your timeline is that you launched a book two years ago and you're sitting here bemoaning the fact and saying, you know, my sales have just tanked. Nobody's buying my book anymore. Well, there's, there's a question of, or do you have a blog post? Are you still talking about your book? Or has it just gone by the wayside? And a lot of times I've, when I've done some strategy sessions with, with authors, with writers, they haven't talked about their book anymore. It's like they published it and now it's listed and it's on Amazon and they're just hoping that people find it. And it's like, well, well why not? How come you haven't posted a new fresh blog post that has to do about the title or about a process that you went through to write the book or something, something to start generating talk again. And their eyes have kind of been open and like, yeah, okay, I see. It's, it's part of the author platform journey. Um, and so that's why you need the strategy. And that's why, that's why I need the organization to keep me myself in check with posting things. And so the page about your strategy is 
choosing which places are that you are going to post to. And so goals for the month, it may be that you've been concentrating only on one social media platform and you're comfortable with that one now and now it's time to bring in the second social media platform where your ideal readers are okay and so each goal for the month may change um, and then we come down to the 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 money part of it, the, the monthly income, the sales that you're looking for, the page views and unique views. And those are things that have, that have to do with uh, like your Google Analytics. And this class is not about setting that up. This, is, this class is about the tracking sheet to help you keep track of all of that so that you can look back over six months and see that your page views have been increasing um, your unique page views. Maybe you've decided to start taking on sponsorship or advertisers onto your website. Um, and you have your email opt-in list and you're seeing that there's new subscribers or maybe some of your content is from membership only. And so you've got new members and then a place to take notes. Always a place to take notes. And the reason, oh, sidebar here. I like to leave room on tracking sheets to take notes and have a space for notes because I want to try to keep everything in one binder. I If I get too many, if I need three different binders in order to keep track of for one particular place, some of the things will fall in the crack. I won't switch binders. So I just keep try to keep everything into one binder binder so my blogging planner binder my pages have places for notes or I insert blank pages afterwards okay um, this is your autoresponder template or checklist and this just comes in handy um, once your blog is established so if you if you're not familiar when you have your email service you can have people opt in for your newsletter or for your freebie that you're giving away. And what, what you set up on that opt-in is what's called an autoresponder. And that is where an automatic email goes out after somebody opts in. And you usually have some follow-up emails. Um, so, so that's what the number in the series is. And along the way that that autoresponder may need to be updated there may be some things in the email that change and so you know updating it and knowing how many emails are in that autoresponder so these are the automatic emails that come out when somebody opts in for your freebie one or when they opt in for freebie two or when they opt in to be notified about your next book or maybe they want to be a part of your beta reading class um, group autoresponder. The next set of checklist has to do with your email and newsletter, and these are the emails that you generate. Um, called one one off. You know, it's after they're in your list, and so you set up your rhythm. Are you going to email everybody? Uh, once a day or once a week or two times a month or once a month you know whatever it is these are the these are the emails that you generate and um, I am now finding that at least having that on a paper list helps me look back and reference rather than going and logging in to my autoresponder system because most autoresponder systems will let you set up autoresponders but will also let you set up to send off just one-off emails whenever you you know need to send an email and it's just easier to look at that when I'm looking over my planning and saying oops oh my goodness the holidays got in the way and it's been three weeks since I sent out my weekly email you know and so having it on paper is helping me to stay organized a lot better. And those of you that are more digitally inclined, you know, of course, you might want to do this as an Excel spreadsheet or something. But 
um, keeping track of it rather than just in track on the, the email system has helped me uh, tremendously. Also, um, this column for type, just be sure to, um, I suggest that you take note, is it an email, is it a newsletter, is it a promotional email, or is it a review of some cool book that you've just read or, you know, some type of product related to whatever your blog and book world is about. Um, keep, keep track of that just so, I, I just suggest that you keep track of that so that you are sure to provide variety. Um, people don't like to feel like they're being sold to. And if every email that, let me just reword that. If, when I'm going through my email box, and if every email I'm opening from somebody, first of all, somebody that's emailing me every day, that gets on my nerves real fast. But usually when I'm first connecting with somebody, you know, I, I'm tolerant of it. But if I've been on your list for three months and I'm still getting an email every single day, if it's not for a program that I've signed up where I'm supposed to be getting an email every day to give me instructions, I I get frustrated. It's cluttering my email box, but that might not be you. But people don't like to feel like they're being sold to. And so if you are always promoting and selling in every single email, unless that is your type of blog. Maybe your blog is a resource blog for, for moms with little ones and you've promised on this email opt-in that you're going to send them a deal a day of some cool something that you found. Well, then they're expecting to see that type of post, that type of email, okay? Um, again, what is the strategy for your blog, but be very mindful of the blog types um, so that you're not, uh, so that it's not just sell, 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 buy from me, buy from me, buy from me, okay? Another sheet that I suggest is your username and passwords. I know that there are, uh, you know, you can have Internet Explorer automatically save your username and passwords. You can have Firefox save. Um, you can even have, you know, these username login places. And like, um, like LastPass is one that I use. But, um, and while that is, that has helped me tremendously, um, I still keep a master list of at least my websites that I have, you know, passwords onto for my, that have to do and have, are related with my blogging. Um, and I have it on paper. Um, and I'm old school, but you know, I've had it also before where my computer completely crashed and I had to start from scratch. And this was before I had LastPass. Um, but, you know, thankfully I had everything written down on a piece of paper hidden, you know, on my desk, but I had it to start from. And so I'm old school. You may not want to have a list of your username and passwords, but I do, you know, like I said, I'm old school, I suggest it. <laughs> now, um, this is not a class about uh, keyword rankings at all, but at one point when you really get super, super serious about, if you get super serious about people finding your blog by just doing uh, Google searches or Bing searches, then you start tracking your keywords 
and where those keywords are are ranking. So when you are creating blog posts and you are wanting people to find your blog posts based on keywords, then this is where you, you keep track um, of keywords. In, in some strategies for building blog readership is very, very driven by by the keyword rankings. So I've included that sheet as a suggestion in your planner. Um, should that be a route that you start going that you are really, really wanting people to find your blog posts and your blog based on keyword um, searches. And then the last overall planner that um, page that I have in my planner is my social media planner page. And that is just to help me keep track of a month and what posts in relation to my blog got put on what social media streams and on what day. And so, you know, Will I post about a blog post on my Facebook page every single day? Probably not, except during a launch or some type of special event. But I do want to be sure and have a strategy that I am at least driving traffic to my Facebook page or from my Facebook page to my blog at least, you know, maybe three times a week. Um, but again, you know, there's no right or wrong to the strategy, but the important thing is having a strategy and then tracking, tracking your strategy. And so um, this is just a suggestion. And so, I mean, you can you know, create your own page. You can use your uh, Google calendar to keep track of this. You, you know, however you see fit, but I just think it's important to to look at that view and to have a place to say, okay, I'm, you know, I want to be sure that I'm pinning to Pinterest, you know, twice a week and that I'm you know, on Facebook linking back to my post three times a week, you know, or whatever. Or it may be that, it, you know, that your strategy right now is to really build your readership. And so you may want to do 10 posts to Pinterest a day. You know, I don't know having your strategy, every person, it's going to be different. And so setting your strategy, having a place to track your strategy, um, that's what this type of page would be for in your planner.